tradition is going to continue as we're about to water baptize a, I think, 23 candidates today. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Before we do, one of the things that I like to happen is we know how beneficial it will be for them, but I want to remind everyone uh, of a few things about water baptism that I, I believe will be beneficial for every person here, for every hearer. Amen. And so what I always do is briefly, and I, everybody say briefly, I briefly touch on or teach on water baptism before. And so today, I know we have a lot of note takers. I'm going to do this really quick, but we're going to talk about, I'm going to entitle it Water Baptism, Discipleship, and Grace. And in a real quick way, we're going to talk about water baptism, we're going to talk about discipleship, and we're going to talk about grace, and then we're going to water baptize our candidates today. Can I get amen? amen. In Matthew 28, beginning with verse 19, here's what it said. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that are commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. This is Jesus' words to his disciples. And so a lot of times people wonder about water baptism, or they think they know everything about water baptism there is, or maybe it's not important. Uh, no matter who we are today, I believe we're going to be benefited by knowing more about it. And so notice in verse 19, Jesus gave his disciples specific directions. He said to make disciples, go into all the world and make disciples. Well, in order to make disciples, you have to win people to Christ in order first to make disciples. So winning people to Christ and discipling them and then them being water baptized or baptizing them was the command of God. Water baptism is the direct command of Jesus Christ for his followers. It is an ordinance of the church. So water baptism isn't something you do to be saved, but rather something you do because you've been saved already by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord. So every person today that's going to be water baptized, water baptism they know doesn't save them. But what this is, is it shows that they've received Christ. Let's talk about that. So once saved, water baptism is an outward sign of an inward grace. Everybody say grace. Just a moment, you're going to hear, all through this you're going to hear about grace. But in just a moment, we're going to define that and look at it a little clearer. But once again, once a person is saved, water baptism becomes an outward sign of an inward grace. It is saying before the world, I belong to Jesus Christ, and I will be his disciple. Amen. Having to know that we need to be Christ followers. It's more to it than getting wet. Amen. Having to know it's saying to the world, he is mine, and I'm following him. So one of the important things about baptism is this word baptize simply means when you understand its meaning, it has a greater import to us. So it means to actually to dip, but greater than to dip, this is why we immerse people into, uh, into the water because all of it's symbolic, but it has a great spiritual meaning. To, to, to be more clear than to dip, it means to actually place into something. Actually, it could, you could say it like this, to place into something, or in this case, into someone. Into something to place into. I'm about to say place into. So when you think about baptized, you should be thinking about not just dipping. You should be thinking about placing into. Not just something, but actually to someone. So what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, water baptism teaches us of our identification with Christ or our place with Christ in his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and what that actually means for us. So what was, listen to me, what was done by Christ and to Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection teaches what was done for us and in us. So every believer, for, so for every believer, water baptism is actually saying this. What the scripture is trying to teach us is, is I died with Christ, I was buried with Christ, and I rose again from the dead. That's what that means. 
And so let me clarify that even clearer for because you may be here today and been water baptized years and years ago. Do you, rem- do, you, do you realize the importance, the significance of what this actually teaches? So it, even though you're not being water baptized today as a believer, and if you have, this is what this is teaching on. I'm reminding you of something that God did for you. He did it in Christ, but it was all for you and I. So water baptism teaches us what our new identity in Christ means. Uh, it is what, it's about what was done to Christ has been now done in me. What was done to Christ has now been done in me. So what was done to Christ? His death. What was done to Christ, his burial, and what was done to Christ, his resurrection, has now been done in me as a believer. So let me explain to this. I know I'm going quick, but you're, you're listening quick today. So what I mean by that, in water baptism, it is saying I died with Christ. Everybody say death. It is saying, this is why, this is symbolic, this is teaching us that as, as our faith was put in Christ, we actually died with Christ. So what does that mean? He died, Christ died for our sins so that we could die to sin. And it's power over our lives. Woo, glory to God. So let's read some scriptures that, that testify to that fact. Romans chapter 6, verse 6, 7, and 14. Let's read this together. Knowing this, everybody say knowing this. Know this, that our old man, who you used to be, is, was crucified with him. That the body of sin, your old man, might be destroyed. That henceforth you should not serve sin. Verse 7. For he that is dead is free from sin. In other words, if, if like that Christ died... For our sin, and and, that that was put away from us as well. And then it says this in verse 14. It says, for sin now shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Say, I'm under grace. Under the grace of God, you're going to find out this in just one moment, but this is letting us know now because Christ died for our sin and break the power of sin, not over his life, but over our life. It means in water baptism, what we're saying is we have died with him to our old man, to who he used to be. Our past is gone. We have been forgiven, and now we have power over death just like Christ does. So water baptism is saying, everybody, everybody say burial. Water baptism is saying, I was buried with Christ. The person that goes under the water saying, I was buried, it's reminding us that we actually was buried with Christ. So in Christ, his burial, when he was buried to ever put away your sin, you were buried with Christ and share in his death and likewise have died to sin. When did that happen, Pastor Chris? The moment you and I made Jesus Christ the Lord of our life. Water baptism is a world testimony to say, this is what's already happened to me. I'm just testifying to the world that the power of my past and of, of sin is broken off my life. I died with Christ. I was buried to Christ. It was put away that, that sin and that power of my past. Hallelujah. Let's read some scriptures that talk about that. In Romans, Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and verse 4, it says, Know ye not, no, once again, know something. No, 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 know this, that so many of us as were baptized into Christ. So what does baptize mean? To place into something. Actually, to be placed into Christ. So our faith, when we make Jesus the Lord of our life, we get placed into Christ. We get placed into him. We were baptized into his death. Know this. Know this. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death. Amen. Praise the Lord. So notice here, just like Christ was buried to put away sin, we, as far as God's concerned, that was, at, that was he did that for us, and that becomes our identity. What he did becomes ours. He did it for us. How I many know that Christ didn't have sin, but we did? 
He bore our sin in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live by his righteousness. He died on the cross. The death that he died, he died for us so that we could get the benefits of what was destroyed because of his death. He was buried to put away what had bound us, and now we get the benefits because now we identify with him. This is an open testimony to the world that I am dead. I was, my old man was buried, and my body to come up from the grave again like Christ did. A new, brand new man in Christ. If that don't get you excited, your wood is wet. Praise the Lord. So water baptism is saying, I also, I also, if I died with Christ, wait one minute, I was buried with Christ. Uh, wait one minute. It also means I was resurrected with Christ. <laughs> Glory to God. So I'm resurrected when Christ was raised from the dead. It's teaching you that you did too. And it, so that you can walk in newness of life and live the victorious life now. Just like Christ did. That life belongs to you. Romans chapter 6, once again, verses, verse 6 uh, in verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 4, the last half of this verse says, that like as Christ was, like as Christ, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, even so, even so, just like we also should walk in newness of life. Why? Because we have the same identical life now that Christ has, the same identical life. Religion won't teach you that, but the Bible does. Come on. The religion wants you to make you feel like you don't get nothing until you get to heaven. But the gospel tells you he did this for us right now so that you and I could live in victory because now we're identified with him. Romans 6, 4 and Romans 6, 11 and verse 14. Notice, likewise, likewise reckon. In other words, count this to your account. Ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. As sin, we're dead to sin, but alive to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, the, the old sin nature is destroyed. You got the life of Christ on the inside of that. You ain't got no sin nature on the inside. You got the life and nature of Christ. You got flesh to deal with and a mind to deal with, but the man on the inside is identical to Christ with his life, with his nature, and with the resurrection power. Verse 14 goes on and says, For sin now shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Hallelujah. In, in the, listen, listen, in the mind of the economy of God, this is true for every believer. Now, you're in here today, there's going to be several people that when I say this, if you've been saved in the last six months, I want you to stand to your feet. Whether you're getting water baptized today or not, if you've been saved in the last six, six months, I want you to stand to your feet. Just stand up, just stand up, stand up. I know some people in here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, thank you, thank you. Come on, come on. Okay, praise God, come on. See all that? Amen. Now be seated. Be seated. Now, you listen to me, what I'm getting ready to say. In the mind and the economy of God, what I've just taught is true for every believer. It's true as for you as it is any other believer. Hallelujah. You don't reach some special spiritual echelon before it becomes true. No, the moment you're in Christ, this belongs to you. The only thing that hinders us is a lack of knowledge. And I'm telling you, this is what God has done. So the mind and economy of God, this is true for every believer. This is why one of the greatest verses in the Bible, Galatians 2.20, says, I was crucified with Christ. See, Paul is writing. And, and, and we know that Paul, listen, Paul wasn't there when Christ was hung on the cross, but why did the scripture say I was crucified with Christ? Because in the mind and the economy of God, every believer was put in Christ when they make Jesus the Lord of the life, they get his identity. So when Christ hung on that cross, it was just like we hung on the cross. When Christ was buried, it was just like we were buried. When Christ rose again from the dead, it's just like you and I rose again from the dead. Can I get an amen? I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Can I get amen? amen. Hallelujah. Now, we've talked about, that's powerful. Come on, that's good news. Somebody give me an amen in here today. So we talked about water baptism. We talked about discipleship or fellowship. Now I want to close about talking about the grace of God. 
This is all. Everything we talked about today is by the grace of God. So let me define grace for you. As we put this slide up today, grace is the unearned. Everybody say unearned. Undeserved. Undeserved favor. And spiritual blessing of God. That's what grace is. The undeserved means you can't earn it. Means you can't earn it. No matter what you can do, it means you can't jump high enough, be good enough, be pretty enough, smell good enough, do enough good works to get this. Grace is unearned. It is undeserved favor in spiritual blessing of God. It's, it, it's something that God gives because who he is, not because of anything that we've done. It's totally given. Listen to what I'm getting ready to say. The grace of God is totally independent. It is given totally it is totally given independent of our actions, but requires our belief or our faith in order to benefit from it. See, we just got to believe in it. It's nothing we can do to earn it. So in other words, when it comes to salvation, the greatest act of the greatest act of God's grace came in salvation. And it was nothing that do that we could earn it. We couldn't pray long enough. We couldn't be good enough. In other words, this is the way that God made it is, I love you and I want you saved. The, the, the only thing that you need to do is receive this unmerited favor. You need to receive this grace and simply receive Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to be to God. In order to benefit it from it, it's not based upon our actions, but upon our belief or our faith. Amen. This is why Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, possibly the greatest verse of a written about grace, it says, for by grace, or by say by grace. All you save through faith, not out of yourself, is a gift of God. So once again, our salvation that we're saved by comes by God's undeserved, unmerited favor and spiritual blessing. In other words, it's all God-given, and it's nothing we could do to deserve this. It just means that God wants you to know that he loves you, and all he's expecting you to do is respond by your faith unto his grace. In other words, you stop trying to be good enough. Stop, stop trying to be perfect. Come on, try trying to earn it. Try trying to think of one day I'll just, I'll, I'll just uh, give up. I'll, I'll give up smoking, chewing, and, and, and drinking and all those things. You should, but that alone don't get you saved. You, you come to Christ and say, God, it is your grace is going to save me. Nothing else can. And I throw myself over the mercy of God. I repent of my sins and say, Jesus, be my Lord. I receive your grace. And that's how you're saved. So all this day, we talk about water baptism, the death, the burial, the resurrection. All of you that are getting ready to be water baptized, remember the death, burial, and resurrection, what that meant. It meant the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross is the place that it started at. And today, I'm closing with showing each of you something that's important for us to understand. There stood that day beneath the cross when Christ hung on it. Enemies and believers under it. Doters and cowards. Revilers and devoted followers. And when Christ in his prayer said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When he prayed his prayer, his forgiveness was meant for all and for all their sins. In other words, not just for their sins and all of them, but for all of eternity. Because every generation, there's been people that that prayer is still working for, like you and I. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The, the, the mercy, the love, and the grace of God. Everybody say, the grace of God. The grace of God were at work even in the midst of Christ's enemies. Christ's enemies were under that cross, many of them, as you just heard. But the grace of God, the grace of God that saves the murderer who mocks him on the cross in his final hour was just as real as the grace of God in this hour for those who have turned their nose up or rejected him. But what have you done in your own way to not receive him? Today, the grace of God is reaching out to you and letting you know that God loves you. This grace that we're talking about today cost a man Jesus Christ is life. And it's grace because it gives mankind, you and I, the only true life. It is costly because it condemns sin. And grace because it justifies the believing sinner. It is costly because it costs God the life of his son. And above all, it is grace because God, come on, Ryan, help me. It is, above all, it is grace because God did not reckon his son 
Listen, God did not reckon his son dear, too dear a price to pay for our life, but delivered him up for us all so that by the grace of God, we too could be saved. This is why I've taught on water baptism, discipleship, in grace and while we celebrate while we celebrate today with every water baptism candidate we celebrate that fellowship we celebrate that discipleship that all's by the grace of God anyway but their commitment in their faith in that grace and that faith in Jesus Christ and why it was designed to be beneficial today for every hearer to hear about water baptism, to hear about discipleship, and most importantly, hear about grace. Because you may not be a water baptism candidate today. Most of you aren't. You may have never been water baptized. That's all right. You can another day. But what's not all right is that you haven't received the grace of God. And this is why this message is so important. Because everything we talked about today was done by the grace of God. We, all we have to do is have faith in what Christ did. And this is why this message was designed to be beneficial to every person. Not just the water baptism candidates. Especially for anyone that, rene- that, that needs to receive the grace of God for their lives. I close with this verse today. In John 1, 17, it says that grace and truth came by one man, Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. Today I invite you to him to receive his grace. I'm not inviting you to be water baptized. I'm inviting you to receive the grace of God that saves you. Remember, by grace through faith can we be saved. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Today I invite you to receive the grace of God. Bow your hearts and heads with me in closing. Today, you may be here. You've heard all I said. Maybe you came for someone else.